This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but I'll talk more about that later. According to Bloomberg, a new Tesla battery factory appears to be in the works, and Tesla is reportedly working on a deal to license battery technology from CATL for this new factory. So let's dive into the details and talk about why this could be a really big deal. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. On March 30th, Bloomberg reported that Tesla recently discussed plans to license battery technology from CATL with White House officials, which they would use to build batteries at a new US-based battery factory. And as this article mentioned, this deal could be similar to the one that Ford recently entered into with CATL, in which Ford owns and runs the factory, but licenses lithium iron phosphate battery technology from CATL. Reportedly, one possible location for the factory that is under consideration based on this article is Texas, so it could supply batteries to Tesla's Gigafactory located there. Several of the articles that I've read about this assume that this potential licensing deal between CATL and Tesla has to do with Tesla licensing lithium iron phosphate battery technology. However, this assumption appears to be based on the Bloomberg article's mention of the Ford deal and Tesla's existing relationship with CATL supplying lithium iron phosphate batteries for their standard range vehicles because this Bloomberg report did not actually mention what type of battery chemistry was involved in Tesla's discussions. This has got me thinking, what if this deal involves not only Tesla licensing lithium iron phosphate battery technology, but also licensing CATL's newly developed M3P battery technology, which is a low-cost cobalt-free battery chemistry with more energy density than what LFP can offer. And I believe this makes a lot of sense for Tesla, and it seems like something they might want to license from them. Now, beyond just some of the obvious benefits of this chemistry, which I will talk about, um, it was rumored in the past that uh, CATL would be supplying these M3P batteries to Tesla in the future. And it's very possible, I believe, that Tesla has already been testing these battery cells in preparation for Tesla using them in their vehicles. Now I'll come back to lithium iron phosphate battery technology because I believe lithium iron phosphate batteries aren't going anywhere. And these M3P batteries are not a replacement for lithium iron phosphate in general, but they are a good alternative for Tesla. Um, but I want to discuss the benefits of CATL's new M3P technology and how this could fit into Tesla's product mix. But before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you're currently considering a solar and battery backup installation at your home, or if you are looking to upgrade your current electric panel, you definitely need to check out Span. Replace your old electrical panel with a SPAN smart panel to access remote circuit level control and energy generation and usage monitoring with their iOS or Android app. With all of the data that this smart panel will allow you to have at your fingertips, you'll be able to use that data to make smarter energy usage decisions and even possibly save on your energy bills. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so they know that I sent you. When it comes to the exact chemistry of CATL's M3P batteries, CATL has been tight-lipped about that and they haven't officially released uh, details about exactly what makes up these batteries. However, based on what I can tell, like lithium iron phosphate batteries, these new M3P batteries apparently don't require cobalt. Some articles that I found, for instance, like this autoevolution.com article and also this thedriven.io article, seem to suggest that these batteries do not include iron in the cathode, but instead replace the iron with magnesium, zinc, and aluminum. However, this cnevpost.com article, which seems to be one of the main sources of this information, doesn't seem to exclude the possibility of iron from these batteries, but describes the addition of these elements with the description, replacing iron at some points. Either way, whether these batteries contain iron in the cathode or not, the fact remains that these other elements, um, zinc, magnesium, and aluminum, are abundantly available and are relatively inexpensive with existing supply chains, 
which of course is really key if you're going to mass produce a battery. However, in addition to good availability of the raw materials and a relatively inexpensive cost of these materials, um, it really gets exciting because this new chemistry is more energy dense than lithium iron phosphate battery technology, which of course allows for vehicles equipped with this new M3P battery technology um, to have more range than if they were equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, when it comes to specifics of just how much more energy dense uh, this new battery technology may be, this autoevolution.com article from August of 2022 mentioned, official data shows that the energy density of these batteries will be about 15% higher than that of the LFP types. This should translate into a 10% range improvement over the current LFP powered cars built at Giga Shanghai, according to Sinotech. So if this does indeed translate to a 10% range boost, for instance, if Tesla took the current rear wheel drive Model 3 that they build here in North America that currently has lithium iron phosphate batteries, if they added this new M3P battery technology, that would translate, for instance, to adding around 27 miles to the existing EPA range of 272 miles bringing it to somewhere around 299 miles of range with this new technology. In addition, according to my calculations, if Tesla decided to use these batteries, for instance, in a Model Y, an M3P equipped Model Y could very well have a range somewhere in the 270s or so, which of course would be completely respectable. And if the price was lower than existing models, I believe that model would sell extremely well. When it comes to the important factor of the cost of this technology, Based on what I can tell, based on my research, it appears like lithium iron phosphate batteries are going to stay a bit cheaper than this battery technology at scale. However, this M3P battery technology should be cheaper than nickel and cobalt based battery chemistries. I didn't come across anything where CATL actually threw out a specific number, but this Reuters article did mention a quote from a chairman of the company who mentioned that this technology would quote, cost less than nickel and cobalt based ones. Notice that the chairman specifically mentioned less cost than the nickel and cobalt versions. And that's because nickel and cobalt are extremely expensive. Now iron is very, very cheap. And so it's gonna be really hard to beat iron when it comes to cost. When you look up the cost of, for instance, zinc and aluminum, which are reportedly a part of this M3P battery technology, those metals are more expensive than iron. So a battery that incorporates these metals into them um, is going to be a little bit more expensive than iron once again, but it's going to be quite a bit cheaper than ones that contain nickel and cobalt because those metals are quite expensive. So I believe this translates into this M3P battery technology being a good mid-range priced option. With that being said, if Tesla is able to bring production of these batteries, a lower cost battery technology, whether that be the M3P batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries, if they can bring that to the United States, it has several other cost advantages that Tesla will be able to recoup due to the added tariff and shipping costs associated with importing lithium iron phosphate batteries from China. According to this white paper that was published last year entitled Implications of the Electric Vehicle Manufacturer's Decision to Mass Adopt Lithium Iron Phosphate Batteries, importing batteries from China to the United States incurs a 10% import tariff, somewhere around a 1% shipping cost, and a 3% licensing fee. So as this paper states, quote, with all the additional costs, Tesla saves only 6% by moving from NCA to LFP batteries when the original cost of LFP batteries should result in savings of 20%. So once again, if Tesla is able to manufacture these batteries stateside, they get rid of that 10% tariff and the shipping costs go down quite a bit. So Tesla should be able to save 10% or more at the minimum by building these batteries in the United States instead of importing them. And this doesn't even include the cost benefits of manufacturing these batteries themselves and not having to pay a slight markup to CATL for their services of building these batteries. So this has a huge potential to save Tesla quite a bit of money. In addition, once again, for either lithium iron phosphate batteries or M3P batteries, this would allow Tesla EVs equipped with these lower cost battery cells to still qualify for the federal US tax credit, which requires domestic battery manufacturing and sourcing of critical battery materials from either domestic sources or from a country that the USA has a free trade agreement with. For example, the rear wheel drive 
Model 3 pack contains lithium iron phosphate battery cells sourced from CATL in China, and thus this vehicle is expected to lose its eligibility for the uh, federal U.S. tax credit on April 18th when the critical material requirements are officially uh, put in place. In addition, when it comes to Tesla's cost, which could once again lead to a lower cost of the vehicle on the customer's end, in a licensing deal by bringing production to the United States, Tesla would then also qualify for an incentive of up to $45 per kilowatt hour for a completed battery pack that they manufacture through the Inflation Reduction Act program as well, which could be a big part, a key part of Tesla manufacturing their next generation vehicle at a very low price. The good news is that while this battery technology is new, it looks like CATL um, is about ready and they plan to actually start mass production of these batteries sometime this year, according to this Reuters article. Moving back to lithium iron phosphate batteries, if M3P is not involved and Tesla is only interested in licensing LFP battery technology, this is still amazing news because while Tesla has made it very clear that they plan to continue to work with their battery suppliers in the future because they need all the batteries that they can get their hands on, for the cheaper LFP chemistry, currently CATL is their main source. While CATL is a great partner, Tesla can further cut their vehicle costs by manufacturing a portion of these LFP batteries batteries themselves. And of course, once again, there are those uh, incentives to the IRA program that I previously mentioned. Now, currently Tesla uses lithium iron phosphate batteries in their standard range vehicles, like the rear wheel drive Model 3 that's sold here in North America. And also they use these LFP batteries in their mega packs as well, commercial energy storage, which of course has a lot of demand and is growing rapidly. But in addition to Tesla's current uses of these batteries, I believe Tesla also plans to use lithium iron phosphate batteries in their next generation, more affordable vehicle that will be built at Gigafactory Mexico. And since this is going to be a very mass produced vehicle, it's going to require quite a bit of batteries and the lower the cost they can get these batteries down to by manufacturing the batteries themselves, this allows them to pass that savings on to the consumer. Back in Tesla's Q3 2022 conference call, Drew Baglino did make an interesting comment um, about Tesla pursuing iron cathode supplies in North America. Drew didn't share a lot of details, but he did say, quote, we can talk more about that at a future date. So hopefully that future date comes soon and very likely it's related to this potential CATL deal. But notice that Drew didn't mention that they were trying to source North American lithium iron phosphate batteries, but rather the actual cathode supplies themselves which leads me to believe that Tesla wants to manufacture their own lithium iron phosphate batteries. Going back to the topic of a potential location for this new Tesla battery factory, once again, that Bloomberg article did mention Texas as a possible location, and this does make a lot of sense. Uh, since Tesla has been looking to localize their supply chain and being able to build batteries near Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas, of course, would be ideal if they wanted to use uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries at that factory or say for instance if they decided to manufacture like i think they might and license the m3p battery technology being able to take those batteries and use them there in texas would be of course great but this factory location could be positioned such that it's not very far from their mexico gigafactory as well which of course would make shipping batteries to their gigafactory in mexico uh, very efficient as well now as a side note about licensing lithium iron phosphate battery technology from CATL. When it comes to the Ford deal, which Bloomberg mentioned Tesla's deal could be similar to this, in a recent press release, Ford described their deal with CATL by writing, Ford's wholly owned subsidiary would manufacture the battery cells using LFP battery cell knowledge and services provided by CATL. Now, what's interesting is the fact that a key lithium iron phosphate battery technology patent did expire last year, meaning that anyone can build these batteries without paying a licensing fee. So Ford could technically go out and build their own lithium iron phosphate cells without paying any licensing fees. However, since CATL is well known for their lithium iron phosphate batteries, and they are the world's largest lithium ion battery manufacturer, by working with CATL, this should shortcut Ford's success. And I do believe this is a wise move 
by Ford. Accordingly, Tesla could go out and build their own lithium iron phosphate batteries without licensing technology from CATL. However, by licensing this technology from CATL, because of CATL's expertise, that also would shorten the time it takes for Tesla to ramp up production of these batteries. And if they're going to bring out their next generation more affordable vehicles soon, in the next one to two years, once Gigafactory Mexico gets built and starts producing vehicles, they're going to need to scale very quickly cheaper batteries and CATL could be the key allowing Tesla to do that. In the end, I do hope that this report from Bloomberg is true and that Tesla is going to be building a new factory in the United States that's going to build a more affordable battery, whether that be lithium iron phosphate batteries or the M3P batteries, because this would allow Tesla to have another battery chemistry in their arsenal for mid-range EVs and give them greater control over the supply and cost of these batteries. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear your opinion on whether you think if this deal does go through, if Tesla would be licensing only lithium iron phosphate battery technology, or uh, if you think they would license the M3P technology as well. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also a special thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. A special thank you to one of my newest supporters, Larry Ferguson. Thank you for your support. And also thank you to the rest of you who are listed on this screen, once again, it makes a big difference and I appreciate all of you. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work, I will put a link to the CleanerWatt Patreon community down in the video description if you're interested in checking that out. Thank you so much.